Hey, today we're briefly going to go over the maintenance on the Perry Pro processor. As we all know, the Perry Pro is a rollerless style processor. It's unplumbed. It's an easy processor to maintain. It's an, it's an easy processor to repair. We're going to do a repair video at a different time for this, but right now we're concerned with maintenance. This is the Perry Pro 3. The maintenance requirements are the same for the Perry Pro 1, 2, and 3. We're not in a darkroom situation, so we're using a daylight loader. When you use a daylight loader, that enables you to load a film in light, ambient light conditions like this. It consists of a lens and two cuffs for you to slip your hands through thusly, forming a light tight seal. Consequently, you want to check a couple of items on it. Check your amber or your red lens or filter, as it's properly called. You shouldn't have any scratches in it. It should be clean your felt lining under it, which constitutes a gasket, should be intact and smooth to keep down peripheral light leaks. Inspect your cuffs, left and right, for loss of elasticity. Loss of elasticity is so bad that you can actually see daylight through it. To check that, we'll look inside the daylight, the day, the daylight loader, looking out. I don't see any light squacking through this cuff, nor do I see any light coming through the other cuff. Once again, we'll stick our hand in up to our wrist where the assistant usually has her hand and pull out and see how quick it retracts. It's no loss of elasticity. Everything looks good. Very good. We're going to inspect the cover first to make sure the cover doesn't have a lot of crap on it, a lot of debris, and a lot of buildup. You're going to see some of these that are nasty, nasty, nasty. You would rather work on a vacuum pump. When you do a maintenance, it is your onus to clean this. The whole cleaning on the entire thing can be done with any approved radiographic spray cleaner. In this case, we're using Air Techniques spray cleaner, which is the factory recommended spray cleaner for this unit. I don't see a lot of dirt on it. Anything we could spray down and wipe off, it looks good to me. We're going to take the film slot drop off, lay it on top of the cover, and we're going to set the cover aside as a unit to expose the transport and the mainframe of the processor. Our first maintenance issue, and maintenance includes cleaning, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to make sure that we stay neat while we do this. If you remember me in class teaching that developer and fixer will bleach out and ruin a carpet, if you drop it on the floor and you step on it and you track it through the office on the doctor's carpet or hardwood, it will look like Clorox has been on that carpet and it will bleach that carpet out, as well as ruin your clothes too. Um, you don't have to replace a $5,000 carpet over an hour maintenance call, so guys be careful. We're going to take our main transport out. Allow it to drip a little bit and set it aside for the time being. This is going to expose our solution tubs. Now, listen to me and listen to me very carefully. Check the codes in your area. You are responsible for this. Check the codes in your area regarding disposal of fixer and developer in radiographic chemicals. Some jurisdictions like Georgia, you can just simply take them out, pour them down the sink. Some localities and jurisdictions require you to use a reclamation surface. If you do use a reclamation surface in one of those jurisdictional areas, please follow the protocol and dispose of the solutions right. Now we have the rinse tub left over, the water rinse. We're going to dump it too. Basically, it's water. First thing for the developer, we spray our spray in, a little spritzer. We're going to wipe out, wipe out any remaining developer, silver salts, or anything resulting from it. And we're going to wipe the outside of the tubs down because we're doing a maintenance. The doctor's going to look at it and the assistant's going to look at it. The cleaner this machine is at the end of your maintenance, the more professional they're going to think you are. 
and that's what we want. We'll get a little spritz here. Wiping the stains off the side of the tubs if they'll come off. Fix it. And the water rinse, unless you can feel, and it feels slick or slimy on the side, the only indication for this is a nice water rinse. If they're changing their water daily, it's put a prescribed method. They won't have a lot of algae or slime build up in this. Okay, we've set these out. Let me set these out of the way. Now, we're going to look at the main frame in the processor. While we've got it apart, we're going to inspect the main drive gear for missing teeth, debris in the gears, any number of things. It looks good. So we're going to get a little spray here. All this is important. You don't have to do this. But let me tell you, you will make a good account and this is a direct reflection on you. Nobody likes a technician that leaves things dirty or leaves his work area disorganized or dirty. And they are actually paying you to maintain this processor and you want to do a good job for them. Okay. Our next item of concern, we're going to raise the baffle after we have unplugged the processor. We're going to pull the dryer transport out. We're going to turn it, make sure it doesn't have any crunchies on it. Everything looks good. If necessary, it can be placed under a spigot. Gently scrub. Shaking thoroughly. Set aside and allowed to air dry. Okay? Uh, if you want to facilitate the drying, perhaps the doctor has a blow gun or an air gun in his lab or either the three-way syringe. The air side of the three-way syringe can be utilized. It's much better to let it ambiently dry. Our next step is inspection and cleaning of the main transport. We're going to turn the main transport around and we're going to do the same thing we did on the main drive gear on the frame. We're going to inspect our gears for missing teeth, inordinate debris, etc. and we look fine. We'll turn the processor around and check calibration. And the calibration is pretty good considering the wear on the machine. When the bottom big tines are 9 o'clock, 6 o'clock, the top tines should point to 3 o'clock on this machine. Now, we're going to cover the calibration in the repair video. You want to check your film slot, your film drop, while turning the wheels on the back to simulate the motor run. We're going to make complete turns, and we're fine. Now guys, one of the major reasons for failure in this machine is a lack of cleanliness. This machine must be scrupulously maintained. The films are pushed through these various, these various slots. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine slots. If one of the slots has debris built up on it, it will pop the film out and you'll lose the film every time. That being said, let's briefly go over the cleaning of the main transport. We're going to take our spray cleaner We're going to take our spray cleaner, concentrating on the tracks Just let it sit there and cook for a minute, okay? While this is in the sink cooking, we're going to briefly look at the heating pad. Plug the machine back in. 
we're going to look at the heater and the heater fan. Look at the top of the heater, this heating grid for melted films, broken wires, frayed edges, anything. Check it out very thoroughly. Also run your hand over the top of it and feel for heat. You should feel warm forced air. And I feel warm forced air and I'm very happy. So with that being done, we'll put our dryer transport. We will reinstall our dryer transport and reinstall the side baffle. After we wipe the side baffle down, remember guys, we want it to look good. Also, gentlemen, while you've got this apart, if you see an inordinate amount of dust in here, which more than nine times out of ten you will, take a vacuum cleaner and vacuum the dust out of it. We'll put our baffle back on. If you'll notice, the baffle directs the heat and makes the heat much more intense. That's what we want to feel. Now back to our main transport. We've saturated it with the cleaner and let it cook for a few minutes or soak. We're going to hit it again. We're going to take a bottle brush or a denture brush and really concentrate on the tracks. This type of brush will clean all the tracks simultaneously. It's very important, guys. Very, very important. Any debris you see on the outside of the transports can also be addressed with the bottle brush. Now, you actually want to rinse the transport off very good with warm water or cold water. The rinsing is as important, every bit, if not more important, than the cleaning on this machine. On any processor, if you don't thoroughly rinse the cleaning agent out, you're going to have problems. The emulsion is not going to sit on the film. The emulsion will remain slick, sticky, and mucousy. And you've got to have the emulsion set on the film so the film's hard, so the doctor can archive or file the film and mount the film. Shake the moisture out of it as completely as possible. Actually feel and see if you feel any slimy on it because the slimy indicates that there's still cleaner on the transport. Set the transport aside. We will get our tubs now. <clears throat> the wash tub is filled up with cold water, guys. Cold, cold, cold water. You will see a line approximately an inch from the top of the tub on where to fill. Okay? Now, regarding chemicals, these processors do not take the standard gallon bottle chemicals that they do for the big processors. These take PerioPro solution. Different manufacturers make it. It's going to be called solution developer and fixer for roller less type processors. You've got to use that because we don't have any heating pad under these. The solution runs ambient so it's not heated to 82 degrees yet unless the room, the dark room, has been 82 degrees for a couple of days to make everything ambient and it's just not going to happen. So the solutions are much stronger. They're much stronger designed to bring out an image without temperature special solutions. Remember that if you have a problem with one of these. Nine times out of ten it's going to be debris or the solutions. We're going to put our chemicals back in. We're going to put our tubs back in. Turn the machine off. Put our main frame back in. Our main transport. Turn the machine on. Give it a chance to seat. Pull our film latch back. Again, being cognizant of dirt and debris, anything you might have missed, keep wiping down. You got time for leaning, you got time for cleaning. 
We're going to wait just a few seconds. I want to hear the film shutter snap back, and you should do this as well. That will confirm operation. Remember, guys, this process was designed to give you a clear, dry, readable film in four to seven minutes, depending on the age of the drive motor. And you will see a lot of these that hygienists use exclusively in offices that haven't been digital yet. Okay, we're caught. Now we're slammed. That means that it's ready to go. You don't have to hang around and wait for the solutions to hang up, to heat up, or anything. A good PR thing and a good way to interface with the staff is to call the person that runs the most x-rays through this machine. Um, let's just say her name's Mary. Miss Mary, let's make a picture or either make a picture of a quarter or a cigarette lighter and run through it just to make sure everything's fine before I leave. That will show your concern for their practice and their concern for their x-rays and your concern for her. Remember, she may not always work for that doctor. She may go to work for another doctor and she will tell her new doctor how good and thorough you are and how you involve the staff. This will bring revenues. This leads into other problems like x-ray problem, an x-ray unit problem, a light leak in the dark room, bad solutions, a possible solution cell, many part cells. It's important that you interface with the staff during this and even volunteer to demonstrate the cleaning to them. Although they got a video with the purchase of the video of the uh, processor from the manufacturer showing them how to maintain it, go the extra nine yards and be concerned and maintain it for them. It will pay you dividends. As usual, if you have any questions, you can call me or Paul or refer to the Air Technique Manufacturer's website about further cleaning. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you very much and have a good day.